There's a uh, there's a channel uh, you all introduced me to. I think it's pronounced attention, but it's A T T N colon. That's the uh, that's the, the 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 lettering of it. Trey Crowder, liberal redneck. He was on there recently, and he had a very uh, interesting breakdown of how we got to the point we are at uh, with the Democrats and Republicans, uh, the party of Lincoln, whose work I'm trying to complete, and, uh, and so on. Uh, I think it's worth a look, and we got a what you can do about it, too. Democrats are the party of slavery is a sentence that's both factually accurate and completely misleading. It's accurate because yes, Democrats supported slavery in the 19th century, and yes, Lincoln was the first Republican president. But it's misleading because our two major political parties have changed drastically in the last 150 years. Because here's another completely factual statement. A Democratic president signed the Civil Rights Act 100 years later. A Democrat signing the Civil Rights Act was a huge moment in shaping our modern political parties because it shifted how the two sides would approach issues of race and quality to this very day, and my part of the country played a huge role in that realignment. See, white Southern Democrats weren't in love with the more progressive members of the party handing out all this equality to black folks, so they started to leave the party. And when they did, Republicans were waiting. But you might still be wondering why all this happened. Why did the Democrats suddenly care about black voters? Why did the Republicans, who had previously been the party of civil rights, decide to embrace all these racist campaign tactics? To explain that, I'll have to give you some history. First, I'll say something obvious. Things were different in the 1800s. Cars weren't invented yet, people hunted with muskets, and Larry King was still on his first marriage. The University of Tennessee wasn't even losing embarrassingly at football yet. So like I said, things were very different, and that includes our political parties. Democrats were associated with the, you know, essentially the party of white supremacy in the South, whereas Republicans were the party of business, of small town in America in the North. So yes, the dominant political party in the South in the 1800s was the Democrats, and the Republicans were formed to oppose slavery. So what's changed since the 1860s other than... I really need to give the proper credit for that Larry King joke. That was, uh, that was, that was good. <laughs> He's an older gentleman, you see. He fought a civil war, ended slavery, and invented spaceships and hubba bubba. Well, it's not like there's one single moment where the Democrats hiked the racism football to the Republicans, but there are a series of key turning points. Like in 1948, when Democratic President Harry Truman signed an executive order outlawing segregation in the military. This did not sit well with Southern Democrats, especially a governor turned senator turned ghoulish skeleton from South Carolina named Strom Thurmond. Old Strom was the epitome of a Southern Democrat, which meant he was a committed segregationist. Strom was so upset about Truman's armed forces integration efforts, he left the Democratic Party and launched a presidential campaign to defeat Truman on a states' rights platform. He called the new party the Dixiecrats. There's that Southern connection right in the name. He lost, of course, as Southerners who secede while claiming their states' rights were under attack often do. Despite the ah. strom and drang, Democrats with national political ambitions would continue to advocate for civil rights. Whether this was the result of purely cynical political maneuvering or genuine sympathy for the cause is up for debate. LBJ was a strong opponent of civil rights. He blocked about every civil rights measure. But in the mid-1950s, he realizes that he's going to have to change his stance on civil rights. Was... Do note, when I talk about a party switch, there's historical precedent. For example, I'm not sure, I'm positive I didn't say that word correct. I took my best whack at it, moving on. Uh, <laughs> uh, the House and the Senate, when they start functioning very differently, depending on which party is there, there's a, there's a, there's a red flag for a party switch. Uh, right now, the House acts like MAGA, in some places, uh, you know, it, it, for the Republicans, it acts like MAGA. Uh, whereas in the Senate, 
Well, gosh, you have more traditional Republican stuff. They're trying to use uh, the existing rules uh, as as literally as they can, uh, whether that's the the intent of the 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 written rule or not. Uh, they're trying to follow the letter in order to skew things in their favor, whereas MAGA is just really r- pulling pages out of Hitler's book and uh, finding the closest rule that they can to slap on top of it and calling it that. Uh, but no, it, that when, these, when the House and Senate start acting differently, that's telling you that the voters of a certain party... Um, no longer hold the same beliefs that the the party as a whole does. Uh, and they're the voters for that party because there is not uh, something that is a better option for them that's feasible yet. But we are in that awkward stage. I also think that you're seeing uh, the early signs of that with the Democrats. You have a very progressive House and a not-that-progressive Senate, but it's more so. It is more so progressive uh, in the Senate, uh, in my opinion, than... um, Let me put it this this way instead. This is perhaps more accurate. The differences between the uh, House and Senate with the Democrats are less fundamental I think that might be a better way to put it. They're less fundamental than the differences between the House and Senate with MAGA. And I don't think it's... Uh, you're, I think that's going to become more pronounced rather than less as time goes on. He's going to go anywhere. He helps move the 1957 Civil Rights Act through Congress. He helps get it passed. So he had come around to support civil rights, but really for cynical reasons. The Civil Rights Act and integration caused a huge backlash in the South among socially conservative voters. In response to this exodus of white Southern Democrats, Republican politicians developed what's now known as the Southern Strategy. I'll let an expert explain. The key person here is Barry Goldwater, who's a senator from Arizona. In 1961, uh, Barry Goldwater uh, goes down to Atlanta to speak to a gathering of Southern governors and says, we're not going to win the black vote in 1964, 1968, so we ought to stop changing. A senator and a a key candidate for uh, most Asking for it, punch in the mouth ever in U.S. history. It's too late. Say la vie. Instead, we need to go after white Southern conservatives, and that's a vote we can win. So the idea here is to just go all in on the Southern white vote. In 1981, Republican political consultant Lee Atwater was caught on tape laying out how Republicans would appeal to white Southern Democrats' prejudices without saying anything too explicitly racist. Just listen to how casually this strategy rolls off his tongue. You start out in 1954 by saying By 1968, you can't say that hurts your backfire, so you say stuff like uh, forced busing, states' rights, and all that stuff. The byproduct is blacks get hurt worse than whites. LBJ was a... Hey, gang. You know how we talk about how they say the quiet part out loud more and more these days? You just heard the granddaddy of quiet parts. And now when you hear states' rights, states' rights being rattled off, just remember what it's supposed to really mean. Allow me to show you one more time. Backfire, so you say stuff like uh, forced busing, states' rights, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. The byproduct is blacks get hurt worse than whites. LBJ was aware of what. And the byproduct is, let's just be clear, the byproduct is, as in the thing he said he wanted them to go for, the byproduct is blacks get hurt more than whites. That is the Republican Party that we have experienced. In a nutshell. That's the goal. There it is, gang. Hurt everybody. Hurt everybody. And make sure we hurt black folks more. And we can't say the N-word anymore. So instead, what are we going to do? Well, we'll use 
complicated sounding political terms. We'll use something that sounds like, oh, there's a there's a there's a political theory here, and it's just an unfortunate side effect that oh, it looks like those black folks can't keep up. Nope. They were the target. They were always intended by conservatives. They were always intended to get hurt in uh, in at what in Lee Atwater's words there to get hurt the worst. But also pay attention if you're a white person who I doubt you're watching this channel. If you're a white person that thinks the following way, but if you're a white person that's going <laughs> yes, good, yeah, got him. Oh, I don't like those things. I'm not allowed to say anymore. Mm, got him. If you're you know a miserable uh, cretin like that. Um, just allow me to point out that what he said was blacks will get hurt more than whites. So even, even in this political philosophy's foundation, they understood that a core principle was they were going to hurt all of us. And you, you filthy cretin, you are the one who makes it possible. You're the one who makes it possible for these powerful people to keep stealing from you because you are so pleased that black people get it worse than you do. Mm. 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 You would have died for sh you would have died for Lee in the 1800s and you would have been mourned by nobody including Lee. What Republicans were doing, by the way, there's a quote from him that frames this hustle perfectly. If you can convince the lowest white man that he's better than the best colored man, he won't notice you picking his pocket. Hell, give him somebody to look down on and he'll empty his pockets for you. It, it seems like it would make the most sense to align with people that are in your same socioeconomic group. But, you know, why do that when there's an easily identifiable way to make yourself sick? Since I'm feeling sour, I'm just going to complain for a moment. This is what I want to do. Damn it. I'm trying to do that with Pixel Progressives. But Jesus, a little bit of animation takes days. And it's just, it doesn't look as good as this. This looks so clean. I might have to find it an even easier drawing style. All right, let's enjoy it. Seem better than someone. Say there's three guys hanging out, like a white dude, black dude, and a rich dude, and there's like 10 cookies. The rich dude takes nine cookies and turns to the white dude and is like, that black dude's trying to take your cookie. <gasps> yep. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, Southern Democrats were enthusiastically for slavery in the 1850s. Almost as enthusiastically as Republicans turned against oh, integration oh, 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 in the 1960s and 70s. Yeah, parties are like people, they change. When I was 18, I thought corn was the new Led Zeppelin. That barely tells you anything about me in 2020. It definitely doesn't tell you anything about my, what my grandchildren think about corn. <laughs> <laughs> the lesson should be to continually question who's on the right side of history now so we can figure it out and join them. I mean, wonderfully put at the end there, too. Figure out who's on the right side of history now so we can join them. Yup, that's it. That's it right there. Oh, uh, what can you do about it? Well, folks, there has been no better time to run for office. I would like to encourage you all to run for office. You don't have to be in the U.S. House. You don't have to be in the U.S. Senate. We need progressives at every level of government. It is, first of all, a pretty darn good paying job. If you are in a tiny little town, you can be part of your uh, city council or town council or charter, whatever, blah, 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 they call it. And let me tell you what the compensation is. It's usually something like a thousand bucks a year. And if that doesn't sound like much, it's not. But they're not asking you to do much. They're asking you to uh, vote on things about once a month. You'll have a serious vote, and by serious I mean it's where it will divert money from one thing to another about once a month. You get a thousand bucks for what will end up being maybe total it all together, maybe a hundred hours of your time throughout a year. That's not all that much time, 
you get to make your uh, uh, community better, and you get a nice little nice little thank you from the community. You want to get uh, even, uh, you know what, let me stick at that level for a second. School board. Uh, mayor, that is an actual, in most places, a uh, 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 full and complete job where, where you do nothing else. Um, uh, comptroller. Uh, city clerk. The person that is itself a full time job, uh, and it's just making sure, really, that the paperwork is in order. And you 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 assist with elections. You do all all the running of the city uh, that needs to be done. It's also, let me tell you, a great place to learn uh, how to how to just exist in these waters. But let me go even farther than this, because God, I understand not wanting to be in the hot seat but still wanting to be involved. Well, you can do that too. Go to, your, go to a group of friends that feels the way you feel and just agree that you'll all run for one seat. You're not all going to be on the ballot. You don't even know which one of you is going to be the one that does the talking. You can draw straws if you want, but just sit around, maybe burn one down, maybe have some beer, and discuss amongst yourselves who would feel best doing what in a campaign. Think of it like a, like a, like a sports team, said the uh, incredible athlete. <laughs> no, think of it like a, 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 a team you're forming for your town. And hell, if it's something like school board, yeah, maybe multiple of you could run but you're all using the same uh, network to get the word out. And then it's fun. You're going to school board meetings together. You're hanging out with your pals at the same time. Same thing for city council, so on and so forth. But run. Run for office. Make sure you know somebody who's running for office. And if all of that's too much, you got enough going on in your life anyway, fair enough. Get familiar in your town right now, a year ahead of time, with the folks that are expressing an interest in running. Go to, go to a city council meeting and listen to what folks have to say. Go to their websites if they've got them. See what they're all about. Look over their social media for a bit. You can get a huge, huge understanding of your city councilors by just seeing the kind of stuff they're posting. Check them out. Get familiar. Decide who you are going to help and who you are going to fight against in 24. You have an understanding of this stuff just by watching, going through the kind of content we go on this show. You have an, uh, we go through on this show. Uh, you have an understanding that is well beyond the average bear. You'll do just fine. But even if you don't win, even if, even if you lose spectacularly, you are going to force the other folks in the race to actually have to try. To spend money, maybe. And you are going to be draining the resources of the sort of folks that say uh, that the, the upside to what they suggest is that black folks will be hurt more than white folks, but they'll both be hurt by the policies they're putting in place. We should stand against that. Let's do it formally.